uh, welcome to this particular module. In this module, we'll looking at, we will look at the characterization techniques for understanding the thickness of silicon dioxide. So, uh, there are three basic characterization techniques. One is called the uh, uh, surface profilometer. Second one is just observing the silicon dioxide uh, with a naked eye and looking at the color. And third one is called the ellipsometry. So, we will be looking at these three techniques uh, and then uh, we will also look at one of the uh, PVD technique which is called uh, thermal evaporation alright. So, if you see the slide uh, you will see that there is a surface profilometer and uh, this surface profilometer will help us to understand the thickness of the silicon uh, the of the silicon dioxide or any other material deposited on silicon wafer. How, how can we know that suppose this is a silicon wafer right I am growing a silicon dioxide using thermal oxidation which you have seen in the last uh, lecture and then I am uh, patterning this using a photolithography uh, to form the steps this particular step alright. Now, if I use this stylus profilometer then what will happen the stylus will start moving from this and it will come here when it comes here it will create this step. So, this height can be measured with the help of stylus profilometer. What is the disadvantage of this particular system? This disadvantage is that we need to destruct the silicon or the layer that we have deposited on to the substrate. What does it mean? That now I have silicon dioxide everywhere, but in this case I have to pattern it so as to get the height of the uh, material deposited onto the silicon wafer. Right. So, uh, these are destructive technique because we cannot keep our film intact. For example, if I have oxidized silicon wafer like this all right, and I have uh, my aluminum uh, everywhere, let us say aluminum is everywhere here like this. Now, I want to know what is the thickness of this aluminum. How would I know? I can only know when I create a step. So, for creating step I have to etch my aluminum uh, in this particular fashion, so that I will load my stylus it will move and it will come here and this will give me uh, aluminum height. But here I am etching aluminum from this part and that is why it is called destructive technique all right. This is what I mean by destructive technique uh, here you can understand the uh, thickness of any material with the stylus profilometer uh, it is a diamond tip in a in a easier uh, manner. Right uh, here, if they they have shown that uh, uh, HF you can uh, use for etching silicon dioxide. The first example that I took here, uh, while aluminum you can use aluminum etchen to etch the aluminum. We'll be uh, looking at this in detail. The second technique which I was talking about is uh, with the help of uh, constructive interference. Uh, this will be we can we, we can view uh, from the above and uh, that is what I was showing it to you. If you see the wafer again I am holding in my hand then you will see that uh, the color of the wafer is different right. So, the color of the wafer depending on the color of this wafer you can say that what is the thickness of silicon dioxide this is a constructive interference and one hour I can tell the color difference between two films having approximately 10 nanometer difference all right. But that is true only when you are a experienced user all right. So, the best way is to use a tool this is where you do not have the tool is approximation approximation does not work uh, in real life domain uh, you need to be accurate uh, when you want to device uh, or design of or fabricate a sensor. Uh, because the performance of a sensor will depend on the accuracy of the uh, insulating material. But in some cases uh, the insulating material is just used as an in, um, silicon dioxide is just used as an insulating material between two layers and uh, it does not matter if it is 1 micron or half micron or 250 nanometer in that case you can just use your eye to understand whether silicon dioxide is there or not ok. So, if you see the slide again. Uh, the uh, like I said our eye can uh, have the uh, can measure the color difference of about 10 nanometer thickness and uh, you can see here the relative intensity illumination intensity uh, uh, versus film thickness as the thickness increases the film becomes darker dark green in color right uh, for the thin film it is close to your light to uh, light gray which is close to silicon wafer all right. 
The third technique uh, is ellipsometer and your homework is to understand what is the use. So, if you see here the light source is there, filter is there, polarizer, quarter wave plate and it uh, you know reflects back uh, and there is analyzer and detector right. So, you need to understand uh, the, uh, uh, the function of each part and that is your homework. What is the function of polarizer? What is polarizer? What is a quarter wave plate right? What can be analyzer? What kind of analyzers are used for the ellipsometer? The advantage of this particular uh, 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 technology is that after quarter wave plate the linear polarized light becomes circularly polarized which is incident on the oxide cover wafer which is this one and the polarization of the reflected light which depends on thickness of refractive index of the oxide layer is determined to use to calculate the oxide. The advantage further advantage is that this ellipsometer is extremely accurate with an accuracy of about 1 nanometer. So, this is perfect for a lot of uh, application uh, multiple wavelengths incident angles can be used to measure thickness and refractive index of each film in a multi film stack. That is another uh, point that you need to remember like I said your homework we to understand what is the role of polarizer, what is the role of quarter wave plate, what is the role of analyzer and what kind of detectors are there similarly what kind of light sources and filters are used. This will be your homework. Uh, now, let us go to your first uh, technique which is a physical vapor depression technique. Uh, uh, I have explained it to you in earlier classes how the uh, how the thermal evaporation works right. Uh, let us in this class uh, see the uh, video of the thermal evaporation uh, as you can uh, as we have seen earlier these are the substrate uh, source holders right and when you when you load the source between the uh, between one of the source holders let us say between this and this if I load a source right then what will happen. Uh, when I heat it, it will evaporate. This is what is shown exactly here, right. This is a substrate holder, and you have different kind of substrate you can uh, load it here, right. Uh, the uh, generally, this uh, substrates are kept at 90 degree with respect to the uh, source, and it is not kept loaded here or here. The reason is because if you look at the cosine law, the maximum deposition will occur uh, when the surface uh, when you when you keep the wafer at 90 degree or uh, in line with the. Uh, source material. So, if I want to show you how the thermal evaporation unit works, let us play this video. OLED stands for organic light emitting diode, a special layer that glow when an electric current is introduced. Consumers are demanding better display. OLED display satisfy that dinner. They are brighter, lighter, thinner and consume less power than LCD displays. OLED is superior than LCD. When you buy a cell phone these days, these phones usually have an OLED display. This is where you can see the big advantage offered by OLEDs. They provide very high contrast. OLED displays also very flexible. OLED also applies to organic solar cell that provide mechanical flexibility and choice of colors. OLED manufacturing can be classified into two categories, which is dry and wet. The dry manufacturing method refers to the conversion of raw organic material from solid powder form into gas phase. This method called thermal evaporation techniques that also used in manufacturing mirror. Next video shows using mini thermal evaporator coater TH350. Thermal evaporation is one of the simplest of the physical vapor deposition PVD techniques. Basically, the material is heated in a vacuum chamber until its surface atom has sufficient energy to leave the surface. The application of thermal evaporation are in production of food packaging, 
optical components, spectacles, solar cells, semiconductor wafer, lamp reflector, and many more. Okay, let me show you one more video where you can see the thermal evaporation uh, system, how we can use it and you will now understand that how we are using this uh, uh, you know video, uh, how, how we are using the thermal evaporation unit to deposit uh, several films.
Okay. So, what you understand from this? Uh, if you can uh, you understand that how the thermal evaporation unit works and thermal evaporation unit is a part of physical vapor deposition technique right. So, in the next class what we will be looking at in the next class we will looking at the E beam evaporation and uh, 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 the, the related videos for the E beam evaporation unit. Uh, finally, we will also look at the sputtering and the video for sputtering. You see I have brought you uh, or actually I found interesting videos uh, there are lot of videos on YouTube, but uh, not every every video would be really informative and that is why I tried to put some videos from the YouTube. So, that you can understand uh, how the uh, techniques that we are discussing in the theory class uh, works and how can you how it looks like. We will also look at the E beam and thermal evaporation unit it in our experimental class so uh, or a laboratory class. So, that will give you a better understanding of how can we use the system. So, till then you take care I will see you in the next class.